Hello and good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in today to the I Natural Body channel. This is Sonia. So we are continuing along in understanding Soap Maker 3. Each morning we want to begin with the little housekeeping. So if you recall, I am working from a um, Microsoft Vista platform. So if it's a little different from what you're accustomed to, trust me, it's different for me as well. Um, each morning when I do log into the SoapMaker 3 platform, there is a shortcut on my desktop. And this is what I do. I double click it and it opens. Keep in mind, I haven't used uh, SoapMaker 3 for any business purposes as of yet. The reason being is because I want it to walk through it with you guys and to share with you the experience. and possibly from time to time um, my opinion of the application so as you can see when we double click the shortcut on the desktop my preferences tab is set up to allow me to see the tip of the day and I will quickly show you how that is done right after we read the tip of the day so it is soap maker includes more than 80 different oils you can use in recipes to add an oil which is not visible, select Add More Oils in a Recipe, the oil name list, or click the More Oils button on the My Supplies Oils tab. And remember what I said in the last video, if you wanted to use the previous tip, you can either click on it like this and it will shuffle to the previous tip or you can click the next tip and it'll shuffle there if you're more of a keyboard hotkeys type person then all you have to do is click the alt key with the letter P or the letter N to move these um, tips forward or back or the alt key with the letter O if you're custom um, some people like to use the keyboard instead of the mouse so it's your preference alright so we've read the tips now real quickly if you do not want to receive the tip of the day each time you log in all you have to do is click right here and it will remove the tips at the startup this is one way that you can do it or you can go right up here to the top left corner and click on the PREFs the prefs tab and basically this is where you set all your preferences in this area and as you can see here show daily tip on startup is selected because I do want that preference and so it is set up for me here but if I didn't want it I can easily depress it or click it here and it will not um, show up when I open soap maker 3 each day alright but I do want mine to continue to show so I will click save changes there wasn't any changes made um, your preferences have been saved, but you and I both know they were originally that way. So I've closed out of that, and to close out, it's simply the red X at the top right-hand corner of each window that does open. Personally, I like to work on a um, like Apple products, and so I'm, I'm kind of like going up here sometimes because Apple has its little X's and uh, minimize and maximizing screen buttons to the top left instead of to the top right. So, but do forgive me if you see me roam a little bit on this end, and it's out of sheer habit. Okay, so we've already gone through our field trip, so to speak, and what we're seeing now a very clean and clear dashboard. At least this is what I refer to it. It refer to the um. Soap Maker 3 platform when there's nothing open. This is my dashboard, so my work area is pretty clean and clear. But now I want to go through and set up my Soap Maker 3, and that's what we're going to focus on today. All right, so remember in our field trip we had the help menu. Um, we always want to open up our user's manual. And from what I'll do, I think this will be an awesome way to give you guys a head start because I know that life happens. I will go ahead and upload to the channel just the audio, just the audio alone of each of the um, sections of the help menu. Okay, so for example, if you want to, um, 
if you want to listen to the manual maybe while you're making soap or maybe while you're straightening up around the house or while you're riding to the grocery store if you want to maximize your time so to speak I will go ahead and upload to the channel the audio version only of the manual and I'll link it in such a way that you can just progress through each section um, listening to it leisurely and then this way when you get in front of your computer to um, sit down and use your, so your software your application you'll have some familiarity with it it won't be so Greek and a lot of times um, I don't know about you guys but for me if I hear something I tend to kind of remember it when I come back to it again even if I've never um, per se done anything with that particular thing but if, if I if I read the instructions to something I'll, I'll go do something else when I come back to maybe um, put something together or what have you I kinda of have a familiarity with it and that kinda of helps me to get through it less stress with less, with less stress so I'll help you guys out by doing that so coming back into um, what we're doing today the focus for today is just to get started and get the initial setup alright so when I did read through this page the initial setup is right here I can access it by clicking on the blue hyperlink embedded in that first help um, screen so the initial setup it says when you're ready to start using soap maker to create your own recipes record supply purchases and in the professional edition track your inventory of supplies and products follow these steps note if you are updating from version 2.8 see importing your 2.8 database instead so real quickly for those of you who are importing let's take a look at that real fast importing your soap maker to database now I'll I'll um, let you know that I am not updating my database I am not familiar with soap maker 2 at all so I just wanted to show you guys those of you who this pertains to importing your database your database from soap maker 2 that you will have to complete this step prior to going through soap maker 3 from this point and I'll make a note of it also in the um, in the final recording for those of you who want to come back to it I'll make a note where you can easily skip ahead to where we will be completing our initial setup okay but this is the information that you guys will have to go through first since this doesn't pertain to me I'm going to click back and get back to this page the initial setup but I did want to share this with those people who are importing the da their database. You must do that part first. All right, so for the rest of us, that includes me. First, we will delete the example data from the database. SoapMaker comes with example supplies, recipes, batches, purchase records, and sales records once you have familiarized yourself with the program using these examples you can edit or delete any examples you don't want to keep to delete them choose clear data under the file database or menu and select the types of data you want to delete warning all data of the selected types will be deleted so do not use this command if you have entered any data you want to keep alright so let's go take a look at the examples that are in the database okay alright so I'm going to minimize by clicking on this button and let's check out my recipes it's right next to the my recipes tab is right next to the preferences tab you can access it here by clicking on show my recipes and I'm gonna close out really quickly to show you another area where you can access your recipes and it's in the recipes menu one level uh, one level above right above the my recipes tab you can also access show my recipes in the recipes menu so either one brings out the recipe um, the my recipes window 
All right. So in the My Recipes tab, let's go and look for the recipes that are in in the uh, database as examples. Okay. And basically, all you do if you if you don't see where you can expand uh, the basic oil mixes and the recipe examples, look to the far left in the ver in the open window and if you're following along you can see what I'm doing but there's a plus sign that is right to the far left of basic oil mixes if you select it by highlighting it you can click the expand or use your hotkeys or if you don't want to do if you don't want to expand both of them together you just click on the plus sign to ex excuse me to expand whichever folder you're wanting to look into so we want to look at the recipe examples we have a bay rum shaving um, recipe we also have a cream soap example we have a hand lotion example we have a liquid soap example and we have an oatmeal ex oatmeal exfoliating and pink lilac example these are our sample recipes all right. So while we're in, while we are in this window, I want to let you know that you can expand this window as you see what I'm doing. And basically, all it is is hovering your mouse over one of the edges, either the bottom left or bottom right, or anywhere along the edge of the window, and it allows you to expand that window so you can see it a little easier. I don't know about you guys, but I can see it a whole lot easier this way. Alright, so in our recipes we have several examples. Alright, so I'm going to click on Bay Rum. You see what happens when I click on Bay Rum? It activates several other tools that we can use. I can dock this window by clicking on by clicking on dock it'll dock this whole window the my recipes window so let's see that so did you see that it actually docks it and it puts it where it wants to go so let's see just for example we are going to come back to my recipes what happens when I open my supplies if I move the my supplies window and that's easily done by just hold left clicking and dragging dragging the uh, window wherever I w may want it to be my my recipes remains open because I've clicked on dock I've docked it to the upper left corner it's going to stay there no matter what I open if I open graphs guess what beneath there is my recipes it remains open okay so we have my recipes, my supplies, the um, qualities graph that's open. Let's open my products. I'm just doing this to show you that once you dock something, once you dock something on your dashboard, it's always going to remain open. And so this will be very beneficial, especially if it's something that you might be working on more than one. You could be working on more than one recipe. You might be editing or updating some recipes. You don't want to constantly open that window. So you can just dock it to your dashboard. That's one example of why you might want to dock your My Recipes window onto your dashboard. Alright, so what I want to do now is close these different windows that I've opened. I'm closing them just simply by clicking on the red X in the right corner of each window. And I know that I've docked this thing. And notice when it's docked, it stays quite neatly to the far left, but it allows me to adjust the size by pulling on the bottom right corner. And I can make this most uh, readable by doing this this way. This is something that I wanted to... Um, explain to you guys but I think I can wait a little while I'll make a note of it I don't want to go get off track too fast alright so once you select a recipe notice that you get access to several additional tools in the my recipes recipe management center when there's nothing selected these different tools are inactive. You will not be able to do anything with these. You won't be able to rename the recipe, neither delete or open or print or make the recipe. Nothing is highlighted here. You have to click 
or select one of the recipes in order to manipulate these different tools. All right, you even get the option of creating a new recipe here. All right, but for the sake of going through the uh, My Recipes, we want to, I would like to rename these and call it Bay Rum Shaving. Uh, maybe I will call it Example. And you have one bat one saved batch made with this recipe. Would you like to have the batch records changed to reflect the new recipe name? So your supply usage history reports will still be correct and you will be able to make repeat batches? Sure. And I would like to do the same thing for each one of these. And I will say example. And I will re now to to activate or to show you this little window here all I did was left click to select right click to reveal and I'm able to correct the um, I just saw something too I need to go back up and do that and now something that you might want to do is remove the ones that you know why didn't it keep it remove the ones that you know you're not going to make and just keep those examples that you know that you're making we'll rename this one and I'll say yes the same thing for the oatmeal exfoliating and I don't know it doesn't take my capital letter E alright so basically what I wanted to do my line of thinking is if I know that these are all examples and they're attached to certain supplies that are in the system already I want to be able to um, recognize the example throughout the database. I'm not making a decision to delete everything just yet because I haven't gone through any of these. All right. So after we kind of play around a little bit with each one of these things just to see the data behind each recipe, then we'll definitely go ahead and delete those. All right. So let's see if I wanted to make this soap so let me real quickly let me back up so I showed you an example of renaming so we got to use this tool what happens when we click on new you click on the new tab and it opens another window it says open new recipe please select the type of recipe you want to create will it be a solid soap using sodium hydroxide a liquid soap using potassium hydroxide, a cream soap using both potassium and sodium hydroxide, or a non-soap, or a melt and pour soap. And so you will use non-soap for melt and pour soap, okay? So we'll say okay just to play it out. The next window that opens, you get a solid soap untitled recipe. And here we have a wizard we can save, we can copy, we can print, we can export, resize the recipe to scale it larger or smaller. We can even click make a batch with this recipe. We can look at the qualities graph and we can expand the size of this window which I think I will do. <laughs> um, we can revert to normal to go back to normal size and you can also adjust each window to your liking if this is fine for you that's perfect and I'll expand it to be full so that it picks up easier on the um, recording and then you also get the help now let's take a look at this recipe tab this new recipe tab the total weight the total recipe weight we also get the approximate volume the cost per five ounce bar, the cost per five ounce sample, the total cost, the number of bars, 
We also have, we get access to the base oils, the oil name. You see here, you can click to insert, delete or shift a row. There's a drop down menu that allows you to select which oils you'll be using to create your uh, recipe. You can enter quantity by the amount or percentage in the next in the next field you can also select the ounces or the frame the metric that you'll be measuring each of your um, recipes in here for this oil and so on and so forth so let's play around here let's say we're gonna make a coke we're gonna use cocoa butter and we're gonna have four ounces and this soap is also going to have olive oil. It's going to have one ounce. And let's see. And let's put a little rice bran. Let's do an ounce of rice bran. And let's do. let's say we need more oils so did you see what happened when I clicked on more oils it says check the oils that you want to be able to check the oils you want to be available for use in recipes and show in my supplies let's pick some liquid oils let's see canola I have some of them some of these selected but I'm going to get a couple more of the liquid oils and let's see we'll do a little olive pomace olive sunflower we'll do safflower and rose hip and shea oil and sunflower and we'll leave that you get a message that says you have selected 19 oils for use in recipes unselected oils will not appear in your supplies list and their usage will not be tracked okay so now when I go to select another oil I'll have access to the oils that I just selected alright alright so my line of thinking is I'm using quite um, a large amount of cocoa butter and because I want to kind of balance my solids to liquids a little I used one ounce of olive one ounce of rice bran and one ounce of grapeseed and I feel good with this recipe I don't know what the qualities of this bar might be but I'm going to definitely check that in a little bit and I'll show you how to do that so when I click on the graph this graph is giving me a benchmark for the bar that I'm creating so far this is what the prediction is okay alright let's put it right here and I hope you can see this I'm going to enlarge this window as much as I can so that we can get an idea alright it says mouse over for values so the benchmark is the silver column and the untitled bar the untitled which is our recipe is the blue column alright and just to make sure that we're both reading it correctly what I'm going to do now that we've seen what this looks like I'm going to rename our untitled recipe I'm going to give it a cocoa grapeseed name okay I'll name it cocoa grapeseed so give me one second I'm gonna close out of this and let's go ahead and rename our recipe
So it's in order to save the recipe, click on the Save tab and the recipe name, your save, save recipe box opens. The recipe name will be Cocoa Grapeseed. And we will save this in the recipe examples folder. All right, now let's open our qualities graph. And our blue column now reflects the name of our recipe. And so we can get an idea of what the, st the lather will be, whether it will be fluffy, stable, moisturizing, the hardness. We get an idea of what the qualities of our bar of soap is compared to the benchmark. Now something that I would like to know about is the benchmark. My mind is saying how did the benchmark get established? Who set the benchmark up? The, and I, look, I'm answering my own <laughs> question. The benchmark recipe is based off of soy base. Okay, so let's go on a field trip. Let's take a look at soy base and what it is consisting of so that we can have an idea. All right, so let's, let me see if we leave this open. If we leave this graph, qualities graph open, we're going to dock it so it stays open right here. Let's go to um, my recipes and I'm going to, I'm going to look for soy base and here is soy base. So. To find soy base, this is, let me backtrack just a little because I don't want to go too fast. I'm just removing that. All right, I'm going to close out and I'll show you what I did and we'll backtrack just a little bit. So when, when looking at the qualities graph, after we renamed our recipe so that we can differentiate which one of these columns were referring to our recipe, I questioned who established the benchmark and what is this recipe? In my mind I questioned that. When I looked at the bottom here it says benchmark recipe soy base. Okay this is the first time that I'm using the Soap Maker 3 application. So I know I didn't set up soy base so obviously it's the system that's it's set up this way. The soy base recipe is set up as our benchmark. We are inquiring what does the recipe look like because we get to see the quality of the recipe. Well, what if we were curious about what oils or what butters or what additives and what have you, what are they using in soy base? To find the answers to these questions, we have to look in My Recipes. When I click on the My Recipes tab, My Recipes Management Center opens. There's a search window here. I hope you can see this. There's a search window. When I click in the search window, I can search for any recipe in the system in our database. So I just began to type soy and there we have it. Listed in the recipe names is soy base created on March 14th, 2016 and it costs 67 cents per sample. When I double click on soy base, it opens the recipe. So the soy base recipe, let's take a look at the recipe that's built in to the um, benchmark qualities graph. All of our recipes, it appears if we don't change it, will be um, gauged against or maybe not. Soy base, yes it is, yes it is the soy base, um, it will be uh, compared against the soy base recipe. So the soy base recipe has soybean, coconut oil, and palm oil. And these are the amounts. There's four ounces, 40 ounces of soybean, 20 ounces of coconut, and 20 ounces of palm. And here are the costs. 
the base oils totals the recipe costs are based on latest purchases and may differ from batch costs made from older supplies now if you see here there's a base oils tab there's a lye water tab there's an additives tab there's a packaging tab fatty acids breakdown options and notes let's take a moment and go through each one of these all right we went over the base oils tab the lye water there's a lye discount of six percent and here is here's where it's telling us exactly what's needed 11.11 11 ounces of sodium hydroxide that's needed and this recipe it's 9.4 percent of this recipe there's no water discount the water needed for this um, recipe is 27.54 once again we're only referring to the soy base solid soap recipe 22.54 ounces of water needed or 3.3 cups and this makes up 23.2 percent of the recipe the percent of base oils weight 34.4 percent expected loss during process is set at 0 percent and you, they're saying we can look at this in options and the options tab is right here we will get there the next tab well, real quickly before I go on. So, if you know that you are going to uh, work with a discount, a lie discount or a water discount, this is where you would set that information. And I hope that if I hope that you don't get it confused either which way, whether you're working with a lie discount or a water discount, you would dictate the the amount here. So keep in mind the less water you use in your soap the higher or the greater the amount of lye your soap will have it will have a high a high lye content some soapers do do a water discount and basically what I understand about it is it helps to create a um, not only a more solid bar but it also decreases the cure time and if you're not familiar with the cure time basically all that is is how long does your soap your solid soap have to um, sit before enough water has evaporated from the soap thus creating the harder bar and this is where you manipulate the water content to help shorten the length of time that you're holding on to your product now I've seen some soapers actually put a use by or use effective as of date on their uh, labels I wish I knew the young lady's name because I would tag her video into um, this video but I did see on her soaping labels she she literally put on the label um, use on and then she had this date or use after and then she put the date by and I have a great I, um, I have a I'm assuming excuse me I'm assuming that the reason she did that is because she didn't want to hold on to so much product and so if she's communicating that information to her customer hey look these soaps have been sitting for only maybe a week or two you have another couple of weeks before I would say that it's completely cured so why would that be something that a person would want to let their customer know I'll tell you why I think it's because you don't want to have a disgruntled customer by um, saying look the soap only lasted one or two weeks or it maybe lasted a few days the softer the soap is the you're not gonna get a good um, amount of time to use it because it's too soft ideally think of the um, soaps that we used to purchase before we learned how to make our own soaps these soaps would last one or two weeks at least easily um, depending on how many people are using it it was a pretty solid bar of soap and so if you are selling your products or um, distributing products that aren't completely cured then your bars of soaps are a little softer and so the water content is still high in that bar of soap now imagine when that person goes to use that bar of soap 
it's not going to last that long because it's a heavily the water still in the soap all right so keep in mind if you're water discounting that means that you have a lot of lye water or I shouldn't say lye because the lye water does um, the lye water solution it's no longer lye in its original state but you do have a higher lye water content in the in the soap if that makes sense I hope it makes sense um, but those people who are familiar with water discounting this is where you will come in to plug in those numbers so I mean 5% water discount might cut off a few days off of the curing time for your soaps and I mean for some people maybe doing additional um, taking some additional initiatives to help decrease the cure time will allow them to play very minimally with the water discounting you know so I mean, check on the channel I think I may have a video uploaded if not I'll check in my um, I'll check in the computer to see if I I can upload it I did a video about things that you can do to decrease your curing time on your bars of soaps I think you'll find that quite interesting alright if you have any questions about this section please leave them below I'll definitely do my best to get the answer or I'll answer to the best of my knowledge alright moving on to the additives tab the additives tab is let's see category so you have base oils, blends, color, essential oil, fragrance oil, fragrance oil, herbs, or miscellaneous. I think all of the ones except miscellaneous seems to be self-explanatory. Let's do miscellaneous. And we get another um, in the additive name it says borax, boric acid, e-wax, French clay glycerin oatmeal and for the sake of just being curious what happens when I select base oil as you can see base oil opens all these different oils that I would have set up this is what I get access to so imagine super fatting if you know that you're going to super fat half of a percent of the recipe or what have you here's where you would input that information in the additives category um, what happens when we do the blends lavender patch blend this is something that's very um, I guess you can say a uh, company specific this might be your company trade secret or what have you color let's see about color pink pigment ultramarine blue this is where you could um, insert or enter the different colors that you use different micas or what have you whatever color essential oil let's see clary sage essential oil lavender essential oil patchouli essential oil rosemary essential oil fragrance oil bay rum lilac and all I'm doing for the sake of um, this screen is just showing us what's been inputted now lavender buds real quickly you and I both know that I haven't utilized the software yet all of these um, different additives are in the system the additives are set up this is something that we will have to set up from my supplies because I haven't put any of this stuff in here I'm sure it's pulling from those recipes that were input for us to uh, use as examples to just play around with the software like we're doing now and miscellaneous we clicked on it earlier and this is where it had these additional additives so but obviously the um, soy base had nothing selected it's just a very basic as the, t the name says it's a soy base it's all it is there's no additive so I'm assuming that this individual which is a good idea 
set up a recipe that's just the base so if you have like a coconut oil let me go back here base oils this is the base recipe all of her soaps probably have soybean coconut palm and then once she selects her soy based recipe she can manipulate the additives or the colors the different fragrances she can manipulate her soap by manipulating the additives but I think this is a very good idea I definitely want to do something like this and um, where would it give me some freedom some creative ability and my additives but at least I know that I will always have to have my base oils heavily stocked because that's my basic soap recipe right so moving forward so I hope you guys got a good idea about the um, additives tab this is where you can see that information packaging let's see what's housed in packaging category so you might have bottle or jar but it's a solid soap recipe you get a small bottle or a large bottle boxes we might use boxes shipping box number one you see how you get, you're able to put that information in there labels label for the bars of soap yes I can see how that would definitely be something that I want to put in my um, soap maker three miscellaneous packaging there's nothing input there wrappers soap bar wrappers so she has or this individual has it's situated to where she knows that when she's labeling that pertains to the soap bar when she's wrapping that pertains to the soap bar in addition the boxes shipping number one so I remember I remember um, Katie with royalty soaps I remember she did a video about how she does her shipping and packaging and what have you and she had three or four specific boxes that she used all the time I'm thinking to myself that what an awesome example you could literally set up boxes um, for shipping and then you could literally say shipping number one shipping uh, box shipping number two and you will know automatically what box pertains to what all right and there's measurements that say per bar all right so I'm sorry about that picking up from where we left off so we were looking at the soy base recipe and we've already gone through base oils lye water additives now we're looking at packaging and we were talking about how Katie from royalty soaps uses the different boxes that she um, did she did in a video about how she ships her um, products to different customers and the different boxes as you can see there's a category that you could set up for boxes she would be able to say boxes and then literally list the packaging or the item name box shipping number one and that it could be one particular box that she mentioned shipping number two could be another box that she mentioned shipping number three could be the other box and so on and so forth so you get an idea of how you could utilize the packaging department to situate and organize your different packaging methods to include using bottles or jars your labels miscellaneous packaging and wrappers all right I think this area is a bit more self-explanatory especially as we see how the examples are set up for us in the miscellaneous packaging there's nothing here but you can get an idea um, especially if say someone's paying you a little extra to do something say like packaging it for like a birthday um, where you would maybe go above and beyond the call of duty to do something different here you have an area where you can select that because that is a part of your expenses and you can input that maybe in a miscellaneous packaging area at least that's what I'm thinking and of course per bar or total it sets it up easily I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not but a lot of times if you like hover over certain areas it'll give you like information that's um, additional to that department or that area so when I see that I'll definitely make note of it and mention it for example right now fatty acids base oil fatty acid let's see what that tab does
the fatty acid composition of this recipe's base oil blend. So, just giving you an idea, some additional information, um, the caprylic percentages, the capric percentage, lauric percentage, uh, what is that? I'm not sure, I can't see any two, or I can't see it easy, easily, maybe if I expand my window, myristic percentage, the palmitic percentage, and the steric percentage. Relative qualities on a scale of 10, here we go, hardness. On a scale of 10, the hardness of the soy base recipe, 5.1. Fluffy, fluffy lather, 4.7. Stable lather, 5.4. Moisturizing, 6.2. On a scale of 10, these are the qualities, the relative qualities. Also, you get the unsaturated um, fatty acids, oleic acid, linoleic acid, and linoleic, mm -mm, linoleic, and what is this one? Linolenic acid and riconolic acid. All right, so I'm saying acid. The does it says nothing about acid on there. The oleic percentage, the linoleic percentage, and linolenic percentage, the riconolic percentage, all of these different percentages. I think the reason why I said acid is because it said fatty acids. All right, so moving on to the options tab. The recipe preferences. Input units for adding ingredients. So how do you want your ingredients to be listed? Ounces, that's fine. Or you can click on the drop down arrow and select whichever, whichever measurement you want to use. Bar size, excuse me bar size five ounces and you know what when I think about it my my soap bars are very well over five ounces each I'm thinking I should increase this size I'll leave it alone for right now okay so we were looking at the um, options tab and the re recipe preferences now I'm noticing something here the recipe preferences this is also found in the preferences tab remember that recipe preferences I think <laughs> let me say that new solid soap recipes yes am I looking at the same thing that's in here let me position these two windows oh actually I can't let me close this here position this one first and then open the preferences back up and put it side by side the recipe preferences we're in a solid soap recipe so I clicked on solid soap under my preferences tab and all I want to do is compare the information under new solid soap recipes and recipe preferences input for adding ingredients water volume units Uh, let's see, calculated weighted units, weight scale, precision, suggested fragrance amount. This is specific to the soy base. This is the preferences for solid soap recipes. Okay, I just wanted to show you where that information is coming from. All right, so you see where you can set a particular recipe as the benchmark. All right, just by clicking on this button here. And the last tab is notes. Record your own notes about this recipe here. Basic recipe used as benchmark example. And this is what she set it up as. The color of this recipe on the graph is right here. All right, so if you I think this is a good idea if you have multiple, um, multiple recipes open that you are comparing and you get different colors. So we've taken a field trip, so to speak, on all of these different things. Let's see what, what else we can mess with. There's a wizard. What does the wizard do? I'm here to help you create recipes. Click each step 
button as I guide you through the steps. If you don't need my help, click un If you don't need my help, unclick the wizard button. You can call on me again if you need. If you need me. All right, so here we go. Step 1. Set your options. Make sure the options are set the way you want them. I've clicked the options tab for you. Choose the input units you prefer for most ingredients. You can always use a different unit when entering a particular ingredient. Choose the calculated weight units and set the scale precision to match your weight scale. Your weight scale. Set any other options you want for this recipe. If you want the same options for all new recipes of this type, click the big button labeled Save in Preferences. Now you're ready to start entering your ingredients. Click Step 2 to continue. The base oils. The key ingredients of your soap recipe are the base oils, which will become saponified. You can enter as many different oils as you want, but I suggest you start with only a few. Under Oil Name, click the little down arrow to see the list of oils and select the one you want. Or you can just type the name if you, prefer, if you prefer. Press the Tab key on your keyboard to move the amount box. Type the amount or click the little up or down arrows to make small changes. Press the Tab key again and select different units if you want. Click to see the list of possible units or just type the one you want. Press the Tab key again to begin entering another oil on the next line. Step 3. Using the graph. Once you have entered your base oil ingredients, you can test your recipe using the qualities graph. If the graph is not visible, click the graph button on the recipe toolbar. You'll see your new recipe qualities compared with the benchmark. Try changing in amount of, try changing an oil amount. Click and hold the little up or down arrows and watch how it affects the graph or replace one oil with a different one and see the changes. When you have a favorite recipe, you can make it your benchmark. Click the options tab and then click the button labeled set as benchmark. All right. Step four, adjusting lye and water. When you're happy with your blend of base oils, check the amounts of sodium hydroxide, lye, and water that soap maker has calculated. You may want to adjust the amounts of specifying a you may want to adjust the amounts by specifying a discount percent. Discounting the lye amount by a few percent is, is a good idea to ensure your soap will not be lye heavy and make it mild on the skin. This is one way to do super fatting. You can also discount the water amount to make a stiffer batch that will dry more quickly. Or you can use a negative discount to increase the water amount. That just explained what we were talking about a little earlier in a more concise way. All right, moving on to step five, the additives. The additives page is where you enter all the non-saponifiable non ingredients like scents and colors. You must define ingredients in my supplies before you can use them in recipes. That's worthy of noting again. You must define ingredients in my supplies before you can use them in, in in recipes. Select the category or just type the category name, then select or type the additive name and enter the amount. When you use a liquid additive such as milk, check the box under adjust water. This tells soap maker to reduce the water amount to compensate. Create your own additives in my supplies so they are available for in including in recipes. You can include a base oil in the additives just um, you can include a base oil in the additives list as in an alternate way to super fat your recipe. Will not affect lie calculation or graph numbers. Alright. Step 6 Packaging. Here you can include bottles, wrappers, labels, etc. used with your recipe to package to package it for sale. By including these items you can see the total cost of the recipe and the true cost of each bar or portion to be sold. 
indicate whether the quantity of a particular item is the total for the recipe or per bar or portion. So SoapMaker will calculate the total. If you specify the total quantity, indicate whether it is fixed or should be adjusted automatically. If the recipe is ever resized, to add packaging items to your database, open My Supplies, select the Packaging tab, and click the New button. Here's a tip. You can include a labor cost item in your packaging list and in each recipe. Step 7, finishing up. If you are into the chemistry of soap making, the fatty acids page shows the estimated percentage of each fatty acid in your blend of base oils. The notes page provides space for you to record anything you want to say about this recipe. When you're ready, you can save the recipe by clicking the Save button on the toolbar. You'll be asked to give it a name and select the group in which to save it. If you need more help with a particular task at any time, just click the Help button. Right click and choose Help from the pop-up pop menu or press F1 on your keyboard. Have fun! Editing. Editing your recipe. To rearrange ingredients, click any row number to see a pop-up menu from which you can choose one of these commands. Shift up to exchange the selected row with the one above it. Shift down to exchange with the row below. Insert a row above to insert a blank row. Delete row to delete the entire row. Alright, so that pretty much explains the entire um, solid soap recipe as it pertains to soy base solid soap recipe. So we went over the wizard, we went over saving um, in our cocoa grapeseed. Print, let's see what happens when we print. You get to preview, let me open this to where uh, it doesn't do much. Oh well, I'll zoom in 100%. That's much better. Okay, so when I click on print, and unfortunately, I don't believe, or maybe I do, just bear with me a second. Yes, I do have the printer on. I had to check, check my printer to see if it was on, and there's paper inside. So when you click on print the recipe, you get the soap maker 3, you get recipe soy base, the name of your recipe, the recipe type, the number of bars, the cost for this recipe, the cost per bar, 67 cents per bar for this batch, the contents, the lye and water content, so here's where you would gather how much you need, how much sodium hydroxide, how much lye do you need. With a 6% lye discount, you need 11.11 .11 ounces. You're going to need 27.54 ounces of water. Uh, let's see. Notes about this recipe, predicted soap qualities. You get that on your printed recipe. Predicted soap qualities, 5.1, 4.7, 5.4, 6.2. Fatty acid composition. You also get the ingredient list with the INCI codes. The INCI codes, for those of us who are not that familiar, this is what I understand. When you are building your label, some areas require the INCI um, information to be listed on the label. Some areas don't. Just depends on the state, I guess, your state where you are. I'm not sure if it's federally regulated or if it's um, something that's statewide, but if it does or if it doesn't, it's never a bad idea to just include it. And here, on your recipe list, uh, the printed list, it provides the INCI information. So it's just as easy as copying it to your label or we'll be able to see as we go further if this information is automatically um, put on the uh, label for us because I do know in the Pro, Pro Edition you do have that access. Let's print this out just for the sake of printing. Let's see what happens.
Now let's try it one more time. Go back here, printing. Please select the parts of the recipe to be printed. So as you can see, you can select what you want to actually print. Packaging costs, INCI codes, the fatty acids. We don't need the fatty acids. The qualities, graph numbers, notes. Um, I don't need the notes. Ingredients and summary. Um, the INCI, the cost, the packaging, I think I like it like that. And this is what that looks like. And you can scroll down. You can scroll down and see those uh, different areas that we already went over. So now let's see if we can print and if something will happen for us. Let's see. Now our icon at the bottom is pending. Let's see, open. I'm still getting the error. I don't know what's going on, guys. Give me a second. I, what I'm going to have to do is, um, oh, I see exactly what my problem is. Give me one second switch over the USB and now I just did it and it printed perfectly and so now I have my recipe in front of me that I can see my um, contents my predicted qualities exactly I'm gonna close this out what I have here is exactly this information in front of me let's see what is export Export recipe as a text file. This file can be opened with a word processor or spreadsheet program for editing, sorting, or printing. Tab character is used as separator. Re export recipe with ingredients list sorted by quantity for making labels. All contents can be shared with other soap makers. Let's export it like this. Let's see what happens. This will export the ingredient list. Please select the columns to be exported. And let's do that. And we want brackets. Uh, we'll put a comma. Separator between ingredients. A comma. You must, you have selected comma as both separator between common and item. Please make a different selection. Okay, we'll say carriage return. And then what happens? Okay, export ingredients list. Text file. And where is it going to be saved? It's saying server to documents. I want something a little easier to find. All right. We'll leave it like that. It was exported successfully. So now let's go take a look at. Um, let's go and take a look at where uh, the export may have happened. And actually, I'm looking for downloads. And there it is. And these are all the different things that I've downloaded. And soy base ingredients. And there it is. Let me open it. The recipe, soy base ingredient list, saved on February 26, sorted by quantity, the largest first, soybean, comma, glycine soha oil, water. Coconut, Cocos nucifera, coconut oil, palm, Elias Genesis oil, and lye, sodium hydroxide. So here it is. And this could be easily copied and pasted. Just this portion here could be copy and pasted on labels for label making. You don't have to keep typing it over and over. Not bad, but I don't need that. So let me just delete this from this computer. As you can see, I have enough stuff on here. And we're going to minimize that window and put us back here. So we have done so much. So we've exported, and you guys saw that, the ingredient list for labels. 
Um, let's see what happens when we click on resize. Open a copy of the current recipe and resize it to total recipe weight, total base oils weight, total recipe volume. So here is where you can resize it. The easiest thing for me right off the top of my head right now with the situation um, we're working in, what if we wanted to resize this recipe um, for 50 bars? What would happen? If we knew we wanted 50 bars of soap, this would be our recipe. Resized copy one of soy base, solid soap base. If I know all I want is 50 bars, and how can this work beautifully for us? Now look, we get the yellow bar, the yellow strip, and it's going to match the red strip because we didn't change anything in the recipe. But as you can see, it's adjusting our qualities graph. But you know what I'm going to do just for the sake of playing with this qualities graph? What if I added some grapeseed oil? and I wanted 20 ounces of grapeseed oil and no don't save it I don't want to save it and I'm gonna decrease this by 20 so I got 20 ounces and you can see when I adjusted it, when I adjusted the palm and the grapeseed, I added grapeseed, adjusted palm by 20, and added 20 ounces of, of uh, grapeseed oil instead, my qualities graph changes. And it, I'll hover slowly and go to the left so that you can see where the um, information changes on the qualities graph. So when I go to from yellow values for this area right in here changes watch this this is what's catching my eye so I'm on yellow when I go to red showing me the values for the soy base values for cocoa grapeseed values for our benchmark alright so just wanted to share that with you that's what happens when we resize now let's um, let's close out of this we're not saving any of this stuff save recipe resize one no alright and it's the same thing here so we've gone through the wizard we know what it feels like to save because I saved the cocoa grapeseed we've printed also we've exported and we got to see how the labels um, could easily be created with the ingredients list that it populates for us with the INCI names listed in codes and we also looked at resize for a larger batch and we could also do the smaller vice versa maybe that's something you'll just uh, experiment with and then make make a batch with this recipe alright we didn't do this because I don't wanna well what happens if we click on it your product cost will be based on the cost of the ingredients list the ingredient lots used to make this batch. By default the oldest lots with stock remaining will be used. But you can edit or you can change this with edit lot button. The costs shown on your recipe form are always based on the most recent ingredient purchases so will generally be different from product batch cost. For more information you can click the help button. Don't show this again or click OK we'll click OK. So when we say make this batch we get a new window that opens. New batch made with recipe soy base solid soap. We can cancel it, we can save it, we can check all, we can uncheck all. Let's take a look at what's going on on this page. The checked item quantities will be deducted from your supplies inventory only for tracked supplies the product descriptive name, the date made, February 26, 2018, that's today. Waste factor, batch weight is 2% less than recipe. And so we are tracking for inventory purposes right here. The coconut and it's checked. Now this little 
red exclamation point. This means something. Do you see this exclamation point next to the soybean oil? Look down to the far right. There is a legend. You have sufficient quantity stock left for the coconut. Time to order more with a question mark. No stock left. And you can see there's a difference between these two here. It, it appears that time to order more has some left in this container, whereas no stock left has nothing left. Um, and then lastly, past expiry is a red, is a, excuse me, is a black exclamation point with a letter X over the bottle. Um, and then lastly, usage not tracked. So, according to our recipe, there's a huge warning trying to catch our attention. There may be insufficient quantity of one or more stock items. Adjust relative list sizes by dragging boundaries up or down to show long name stretch window sideways. Okay, and that's basically just telling us that we can adjust this window in order to reveal any information that might be hidden. And so we have something going on here. Now you can see immediately that there's no stock left in soybean, no stock left in lye water, and no stock left for water. So we need to do something about that. We're either going to uh, purchase more or decrease our recipe. 23 bars. Do we really need 23 bars? Let's see what happens when we say let's make 10 bars. Uh, still not getting anything changing here. Maybe we can do a custom. Nothing changes even when I adjust. Okay, let's see. Total batch cost 15. Save back check. My question is, while I'm looking over this, is um, it says I'd, I'd have to use 1.25 pounds. And it's 46 pounds left. And same here. The, so the coconut and palm is okay. Basically, I have nothing available in soy, soybean, so I don't have any stock to manipulate. So I can't adjust my recipe when there's nothing available. I have no stock left. And same thing with um, the lye and the water. I have nothing in stock, so I can't manipulate this recipe. All right, so. I think that was a good little lesson for us to learn. We learned about the waste factor. We learned how to read um, where we have stock or where we don't have stock. In addition, we read the legend. And we can see all these signs that are telling us, look here, there's not enough stock available. All of these little icons mean something. But look, there's a legend for us to stay on point. So what if we uncheck this? Well, we wouldn't be making anything. <laughs> we wouldn't be making soap. All right, so I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to cancel that idea. We're not going to make that soap. All right, so the next thing I want to do now that we have looked over our base recipe, solid soap recipe, the soy base recipe, I'm going to close out of this. And that takes us back to my recipes. And also when I closed out of each of those things, notice that our qualities graph is now only depicting the two, um, our one cocoa grapeseed and the benchmark. All right, so, and all of that stemmed from inquiring what was this whole so soy-based thing talking about. So I'm going to close out of recipe management center by clicking on the red X in the top right hand corner and that brings us back to 
cocoa grape seed we are building a recipe right this is the solid soap recipe so we said that the cocoa grape seed solid soap recipe is a new soap and we are um, building what oils and additives and what have you that's going to be there so I know I moved this down here but let's let's put it on this side so I can work coming down I've already entered in the um, base oils we've got that entered and now we're going to go ahead and adjust uh, our additives perfect so line one this first category we're going to say um, let's put a color pink pigment and let's do one ounce and I'm going to do this on purpose let's do miscellaneous Mm, oatmeal let's do two ounces alright and lastly the fragrance oil 0.22 ounces is what they're suggesting let's do 0.5 lightly scented alright so the next thing I want to focus on is the lye water um, 6 percent lye water discount lye discount water needed 2.18 ounces and the packaging these are going to be boxes actually let's do wrappers one per bar alright and so now I can save copy print or export or resize or make or graph let's see what happens when we click make recipe must be saved before making a batch would you like to save it okay now your product cost will be based on the cost of the ingredient lots used to make this batch by default the oldest lot with stock remaining will be used but you can change this with the edit lot button okay we don't have anything in stock none of these oils or butters or additives or what have you are in stock not even more water or lye water or sodium hydroxide lies so let's cancel this but isn't it a good idea to just play around with this thing to get some familiarity um, prior to going in in here and doing this stuff so let's close out of cocoa grape seed solid soap base solid soap recipe so we've made our we have built as easily as that our first recipe all right and we are going to undock the qualities graph alright so I hope that was beneficial for you I hope you got to see how that my supplies area works so the next thing I want to do is go back into the help which is minimized at the bottom alright so we need to delete this example we got a chance to play with the example for a little bit now we need to delete them and we are going to clear the data alright and where I'm getting that is right here because we're still doing our initial setup first delete the example data from the database to delete them choose clear data under the file database menu alright let's do that we're gonna minimize let's go file database clear let me do that again okay this is where you should be go 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 up to the top left and click on file under the file menu scroll down until you come to database database will bring up another window that next window scroll down to where it says clear database and this is what we want to do we are going to clear the database so click on clear database you get another window that opens it says this command is intended to be used once to remove example data that came with soap maker 
Use it before you start entering your own ingredients, recipes, etc. into your database. Check the data types you want to delete. Delete all batches and sales records, recipes and blend formulas, recipe groups, purchase records and ingredient cost, additive ingredients, packaging items, suppliers and customers. We are clearing the database. What you guys saw me do earlier um, was just for the sake of us playing around in it. And so I think I feel very confident about, um, well actually let me cancel this. Let me cancel this. Let me afford us a moment to look at my supplies. All right, and so once again, and the, let me open this over because I think we kind of had a glitch in the system, but from the dashboard, we haven't done anything as far as uh, deleting the database yet. I wanted to take a look at the My Supplies tab. And once again, you can access My Supplies easily by clicking on the tabs here or even going in the menu, the Supplies menu, and accessing it here through the Supplies list. So, But as you can see, all of these different icons actually mean something. And in the previous, um, earlier, we located a legend that depicts what each one of these icons mean. So as we can see the canola oil we can review if we're in stock or not. Zero is out of stock. We have no stock for any of these with the exclamation point in the empty bottle. Alright but as we can see for palm and for coconut and for castor these have some supply left and you can see what ounces, pounds, and pounds of um, supplies that we have in each one of those categories. Let's see what else do we want to look at here. There is a wizard. We're going to go through the wizard rule um, quickly. Also we can set up new ingredients. We can define a new item right here. Let's click that. Enter a name for the new oil. Why is it saying new oil? It's because we have the base oils tab listed. Okay. I'll click out of that we can rename an item so palm is selected let's this item is a standard oil and cannot be renamed instead you can create a new custom oil and copy all of this oil's properties okay lye water same thing here we don't have anything in stock all zeros and this little icon depicts the same thing additives let's expand everything in the additives category and we can see all of our different additives here. I noticed to the far right, excuse me, to the far right, track usage, excuse me, track usage, remind me to reorder when two ounces remains. That's the pink pigment, uh, ultramarine blue, even in the essential oils, you're tracking the usage when there's only five ounces remaining in the essential oils. 10 ounces when there's lavender, only 10 ounces of lavender left, you're tracking the usage. So if you, patchouli, you're tracking the usage when there's 10 fluid ounces left, you'll be reminded. And so you can see how you can set up your additives ingredient, uh, additives ingredients. Under packaging, let's expand all. And you can see that here. Do we have any? We're tracking the usage proportion on the bottles, the small bottles and the large bottles and on the boxes and labels for the soaps and the wrappers for soaps. So tracking the usage is a very good thing. Um, this way you know, you know when they're running short, right? Okay, the blend formulas for blends and infusions. Blended ingredients appear in base oils or additives list. And there's some different parameters here that's caught my attention. Based on latest purchases, see options. Show only tracked items. Show only items with which need replenishing. Show only items with stock remaining. And let's see the options. This comes from our preferences tab. We can dictate how we want the unit cost to display for the oils, for lye water, for additives, and for packaging. Alright, going back here. Alright, so let's see how do we set it up. 
let's go over the wizard. It says, I'm here to help with your supplies. Select a task and I'll guide you step by step. If you don't need my help, unclick the wizard button. You can call on me again if you need me. In the initial setup, the initial inventory setup, we have to do this, folks, at least one time. One time, a one time setup. When you're ready to start using Soap Maker to create your own recipes and track your inventory of supplies and products, you will need to go through a one time setup process. Click this link for more information and a step by step instruction. Click this link for information and step by step instructions. Okay? Help with setup. Is that our page? Yes, this is the, the exact page that we already have open. So we'll, we'll, we will minimize that. Continuing along, status indicator icons. Each supply item has an icon indicating the current status of that item's stock so you can see at a glance if it needs attention. Sufficient stock left looks like these. Time to order more with a question mark looks like these. And you can always double check that by looking at the actual figure under the column in stock. All right, no stock left looks like these. Past expiry date looks like this. And usage not tracked looks like this. So we have additional help to help us understand what each icon means by going to the legend in the wizard. Okay, moving along. New base oil. Add a new base oil. Click the more oils button to see the list of soap maker standard oils. Put a check mark next to any you want to use and, and click save changes. If you use an oil which is not in the standard list, click new on the toolbar, enter the oil's name, and then fill in the oil properties. There is an option to copy properties from any of the standard oils. If you want the stock quantity to be the reduced, to be reduced each time you use the ingredient to make a batch, check track usage and enter the quantity at which you should order more. Enter any special notes about the ingredient. Next is new additive. Add a new additive ingredient. Click new on the toolbar and enter a name for the new additive. But real quickly, make sure additives is selected the tab is selected and then you can click new. Alright, you will be asked to select a category or create a new one. Enter its specific gravity. If you don't know it and can't find out, enter 1 which is the standard gravity of water and then click OK. But see the help topic, specific gravity. If you want the stock quantity to be reduced each time you use this ingredient to make a batch, check track usage and enter the quantity at which you should order more. Enter any special notes about this ingredient. Alright, so you can see what um, tools are available to you under the additives tab. You get to delete, print, shipment, purchases, usage, recipes. The recipes will list all recipes containing that selected item, the selected item. So, um, There's no recipes using clary sage, lavender. We have a, a blend that utilizes the additive lavender. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm selecting an additive and then I'm clicking on recipes to see which recipe uses the patchouli essential oil. That is used in a blend. All right, and I'll try another one. Rosemary. Which ingredient, which recipes uses the additive rosemary? Our oatmeal exfoliating product uses the essential oil rosemary. And there's a little note right here. The following recipe contains rosemary essential oil. Okay, I think that's very neat to have. Usage shows the usage history for the selected item. This is a usage history for rosemary essential oil. This year, last year, or all dates. So it appears that we haven't used rosemary essential oil. Um, we have a list of all of our suppliers here. 
easy soap soap making supplies local grocery store my own garden oils galore up your nose aromas woodman designs unknown supplier folks I don't know about you guys but this is definitely an application to help us stay very um, organized maximizing all of our um, time for us right great time management take the time to set this thing up one time kinda of wrap your mind around it one time and then use this as a tool to help you stay organized and watch your business grow moving on to packaging here we add new packaging click new on the toolbar and enter a name for the new packaging item you'll be asked to select a category or create a new one select whether recipes will usually specify this item per bar or portion or total for the recipe if you want the stock quantity to be reduced each time you use this item to make a batch check track usage and enter the quantity to which at which you should order more so this is where you track your usage this is where you say remind me to reorder when it reaches how many items remaining 100 in this case the wrapper to soap bar recipe quantity is usually per portion and since it's highlighted this is all wrapper soap bar this is why we have this information and we've used the these four recipes contain wrapper soap bar the bay rum the cocoa grape seed the oatmeal exfoliating and the pink lilac all have used the soap bar let's try box shipping number one nothing there are no recipes containing box shipping number one what does shipment mean okay new supply purchase or expense for boxes lot number we're gonna go through this okay let's go through this new supply purchase or expense so here's a purchase or an expense tip for using this form to add a supply item double click it in my supplies or enter it here to begin you may have to click the new item button or press control in press the tab to move to the next input field or shift tab to move back enter either the price per container or the total price press enter to save the changes or escape to cancel the changes move down the list of items by pressing enter or shift enter to move up to record non-ingredient expenses like tools fixtures fees travel etc click the other expenses tab all right don't show these tips when you form is first opened you can show them anytime by clicking show tips on the toolbar all right let's close this out cancel save and close save or new finish later show tips and order number two supplier supplier invoice number raw materials and packaging other expenses okay raw materials and packaging other expenses two tabs here item number so it appears that this would be like a particular invoice status indicator I equals inventory N equals non inventory S equals special special price when editing previous some already used existing products made with this lot will not reflect cost changes item deleted or no purchase record found these icons will mean this overhead costs are distributed proportionally to each item listed item in are reflected in their adjusted cost materials total price other expenses total so it appears like it's the breakdown of the invoice that you would have received from a purchase or from an expense and there's other expenses that may or may not um, be um, directly related to this particular uh, I'm trying to think of an example so for example um, 
It could be like scotch tape on the invoice. You might have it listed here and we'll see business expense, non-business expense. So you can follow these indicators. So like I said scotch tape, you know, you don't really use it in soaping, but you do use it in packaging. Um, it could be a non-business expense because you might use this, the tape all over, the scotch tape everywhere in the home. People may use it. So though you want to, um, you may want to keep up with it. You can list it as a non-business expense possibly um, or even list it as a business expense. We'll see as we move, as we progress through the software what additional information might be wrapped around new supply purchase or expense. All right. And then another thing that comes to mind might be like your shipping cost that could be um, taken into it into account here as well other expenses that you incurred um, a lot on your invoice for example alright so I'm going to click cancel and we're going to continue with the uh, wizard organized by category organized by categories for additives or packaging create new categories by clicking the new category button click the little plus side next to a category icon to expand it and see the additives it contains click the minus sign to collapse the category to move an item to a different category drag the item icon onto the destination category icon to move several items at once click the move signs button and select the source and destination categories use shift click or control click to select the items you want to move and click the move button when finished click done I think we went over this one already it appears to be um, really self-explanatory it's already expanded because we clicked expand here um, we can collapse that and bring everything back in order view as a sortable list as such and you can see that it appears to be in alphabetical order and you have all categories you can have just the blends or if you want to look at just colors or if you want to look at just essential oils and so on and so forth we'll put all categories you can even even search for a particular additive you can add a new category you can move these category move the additives I think we did this one also. Moving forward, record purchase. Record a new purchase. Select the item purchase. Select the item purchased and double click it or click shipment on the toolbar. This will open the new supply purchase form. Let's do it because that's where we just were. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay. Select the supplier or create a new one by choosing new add new supplier enter the invoice number if any so this is recording a purchase from the invoice exactly like we said earlier for the selected supply item enter the number of containers the size of each container and the total price if you purchase several different items in this shipment enter them on separate lines at the bottom enter adjustments and overheads these will be spread proportionally across the individual items to give the adjusted cost of each. For any special notes about the purchase, click um, enter any special notes about this purchase then click save and close. So yes, alright, so this is to record a invoice and this is where you will enter the supplier. Here's um, different suppliers that are already in here how would I enter a new supplier you have no completed entries to save make sure you have specified for each supply entry the number of containers container size total price do you want to continue entering data yes supplier invoice so let's say that this came from easy soap making supplier invoice number blah blah, blah. just imagine that something's there base oil canola um, best before lot number container size so here you can record all the information about the purchase and 
what does this do? Okay, so this is going to help us to determine our true cost of creating product. So I can recall earlier that the um, cost to make the soy base soap base that we looked at that recipe was 67 cent per bar. That 67 per cent per bar is derived from all of the expenses that it takes to create that bar soap or that batch of soap. And so all of these expenses are divvied up to help us determine what our true costs are. All right, and moving forward to blends, blend in, blends and infusions. Create your own custom blends and infusions of two or more ingredients, then use them in recipes like any other ingredient and track their usage in your inventory. Click the help button for information about creating and using blends. I think this is self-explanatory here. Soap maker has encountered an error or an error in new supply shipment import an error log has been saved. Okay, I may have did that, I don't know. Moving forward, this is where we put our new blend. We've seen this before. I can close out of this and we get this error message. I'm not too familiar with the software yet to de determine whether or not it should give me an error, but thank goodness it's recording it. All right. And then edit stock quantities. This is the last section of the wizard. It says audit your stock quantities. Periodically, like annually, you will want to audit your stock. Print your entire stock list. Take it to the stock room and mark up the printout with the actual quantity remaining of each stock item. In My Supplies, select an item whose in stock quantity is incorrect and click Purchases on the toolbar. This will open the Purchase History Report. All purchase records of the selected item are listed here with the most recent at the top. The blue arrow indicates the oldest purchase with stock still remaining. Select the record that is incorrect and either click remove on the toolbar to remove some of the stock and record it or click edit or double click the record and enter the correct quantity. You can leave the purchase history window open and click another item in my supplies to see its history. Alright so here we have edit stock quantities. This is what we're doing. Okay, so here I double click the base oil caster and I get this caution sign that says problem or incomplete entry item cannot be saved. I think this is me from earlier. I really don't have anything to put here. So I am going to cancel, cancel that and what happens next? It's still there. No, it's not there. Okay, so it's been removed. All right, so I'm canceling out of that, but this is how you would edit the stock quantities. Let me go in, since I've looked in cast already, let's do coconut. I'll double click on coconut. And if I wanted to edit this, notice how I'm looking for the edit. I just saw something. No, I was looking at this date. This is today's date. Okay, let's cancel that. All right, let's see. So it says we can leave the purchase history, audit your stock. Okay. blends. These are the base oils in my supply. Select an item. Click purchases. Click right here. And let me move this to the side so that you can see. I'll put it right here. It says click um, 
purchases and this is where I clicked right here this will open the purchase history report all purchase records of the selected item are listed here with the most recent at the top the blue arrow indicates the oldest purchase with stock still remaining select the record that is incorrect and either click remove on the toolbar to remove some of the stock and record it or click edit we will click edit this will enable you to change the supply stock remaining but will not leave any record instead you can remove stock and keep a record do you still want to proceed yes so it's saying we have 47 and a half let's put we have 40 pounds and save all right and we've entered the correct quantity quantity all right then now we can close out of this and our coconut has been adjusted to reflect the 40 ounces that 40 pounds excuse me that I adjusted it to all right so I believe that is everything for the my supplies tab and basically all we're doing right now is going over we're going over some of the example data that's in the uh, software in the application before we delete the data before we clear all of the data I just wanted to give us an idea of how this stuff is inputted now we're going to look at my products this is the last area to look at to get an idea about how it's set up in the system so that we can have an idea for our own setup right product status and production history there is a wizard let's start with the wizard for this one it says select a task and I'll guide you step by step if you don't need my help unclick the wizard button for important information about naming your products click this link and it will take us to the help menu okay so this is our product status and production history the initial setup initial inventory setup when you are ready to start using soap maker to create your own recipes and track your inventory of supplies and products you will need to go through a one-time setup process click this link for information and step-by-step -step instructions the batch list the batch list can show all the batches you have made or you can select batches made with recipes in a particular group batches made with a particular recipe or batches with a particular product descriptive name you can also select a particular location or date range and choose to show only batches which still have products remaining in your stock the list can be sorted by clicking a column header click twice to sort in reverse order for each batch the list shows the date made whether it's ready based on the cure time you set and the number of products made sold and still remaining in stock the icon on the left indicates the root the recipe type C for cream soap L for liquid soap S for solid soap or N for non soap okay edit batch details editing the batch details when you create a new batch soap maker fills in the batch details based on your preference settings you can see the details for a particular batch by selecting it in a batch in the batch list if you want to change any details click the edit button the bars or portions made and their size are set in the new batch dialog but you can change them here if you make more than one size of product from a single batch you can specify as many as four different bar or portion sizes for each size you must create a unique descriptive tag you can change the product description date made cure time and expected shrinkage and add any special notes about the selected batch when done editing click the save button or click cancel okay record product sales recording your product sales to record sales you create a sales register for one complete customer delivery or for all product 
products sold at a particular venue, like a day at a market. This register contains records for each product you sold. To start, double-click a batch in the batch list or select it and click the sale button on the toolbar. This opens a dialog where you choose the correct product size and enter the quantity. When you click OK, these products will be inserted into a new sales register. To add more products to the same sales register, double click another batch in My Products or select it and click the Sale button on the toolbar. All your sales are recorded in the Invoices Report. Click the Invoices button on the toolbar to see it. From there, you can print customer invoices. All right, so let's do this smooth shave. That's the product description. We made one batch and two sub batches. I'm sorry about that. We made one batch and two sub batches. Product description, smooth shave. Recipe name, bay rum shaving example. Year, month, and day, May 10th, 2017. Is it ready? Yes, 32 were made, 5 are gone, there's 27 left. What happens when we click Invoices? When we click Invoice, we have to show sales to a selected customer or at a venue, Farmer's Market, Branch, the main branch with Price Category, Consignment, Tax Group, default. Okay, and let's see. Content sold from product stock location, packaging item, memo, only list unpaid invoices, no records found to match selection criteria. Let's see if anything happens in all. All right, so here, when I change the parameters to um, retrieve any invoices for all customers, all branches with a price category, all categories, all dates, it did retrieve one invoice from Ye Old Soap Shop. Let's double click it and see what happens. Or click it once. I clicked it once and it gives me additional information. The contents of the sales register. Sold from product stock location from home, smooth lilac, um, medium size, 2.6 ounces, product code, different parameters set up, five of these, $4 each made twenty dollars it appears pink lilac too large at four point three ounces packaging item box shipping one the invoice came out to eighty six dollars and ten cents and so payment due on delivery thank you box shipping I don't want this to kind of confuse us a little. Maybe I'll put it like this. All right, and so, and we have some additional information. Sales register invoices, edit content, header, edit my company name, my edit my company name and address for the invoice header. You can print the invoice, you can export export invoices as a text file for editing mark paid and then you have the customer name here all right my fabulous soap company as you can see I have not edited this in any way shape form or fashion we'll do that in a little bit you get to incorporate a uh, JPEG not a JPEG your company logo and address and all this contact information. So if I wanted to change that and all I did was click under the invoice header
And so this information is changeable. And unfortunately, I don't have I don't have this um, in this computer. Though I have a um, a header that I can use, so I'm going to click Save. Let's see if it did save it. Yes. So this is where you can alter or edit your company information. All right. Like I said, we're going to f do this together, and so when I come across something that definitely is something I can edit or adjust, I'll do it. Though I do think that it's going to all delete because we're going to clear the clear all of the data. We'll see what remains and what doesn't. Right? Open customer list. We have two customers. We can add a new customer. This appears to be self-explanatory. Uh, ye old soap. There's branch information. If you have a new branch, if you need to edit their branch, are they a consignment cu uh, customer for you? What's their billing address? What's their shipping address? Who's your contact at this office? Their name, their contact information, their phone number, um, their website information, preferred pricing category. Are they retail, consignment, wholesale? You can add or change categories in My Preferences. Pretty neat to have a billing label, a shipping label. You can do that straight from here. You can go to their website. You can email their contact. Pretty self-explanatory. The Customers and Venues tab or the information. Their Customers and Venue information. I'm going to close out of this. And what happens when I nothing happens when I double click on pink lilac or smooth shave but only when I double click on the um, customers name does it give me the invoice and break down all of this information even the date of the invoice along with the pricing category and I get to track the payment of this invoice price list, fill prices, clear prices, tax rates. You see there's some parameters listed. I did put those in. I remember it now. I can show tips or I can remove tips by depressing it. All right. Payment due on delivery. Thank you. Boxes. We did look at this a little while ago. Close sales register without saving. Yes. All right. So that was just a bigger window of the same exact information, okay? That was record product sales. And let's close out of this window as well. It's a lot of information to take in at one time, but we're walking through it and we're um, playing around with it. And I hope that it's f getting you familiar with um, using the application. I think it's very good I think it's really good it's just a lot to get used to initially but we'll get through it together moving forward to the sales history viewing sales history to view the list of sales records for a particular batch select it in the batch list and click the reports button on the toolbar and choose sales category sales history excuse me you can also choose sales history under the main report menu on the sales history report you can choose to view only sales of a particular recipe or recipe group sales to a particular customer customer or at a particular venue and sales within a date range for each product sold the list of sales records shows your unit price the total amount and your profit if you need to contact a customer who bought your product select the sales record and click the customer info button on the toolbar Click the, voice, click the View Invoice button to see the complete content of the sales register that includes the selected product record and optionally 
print a customer invoice. All right, so let's take a look at this window. Show product stock and location home. In home, I have 27 of Bay Rum shaving, the smooth shave left, and I have 13 of Sweet Spring left. All right. Show my locations, list batches by recipe or product description. Product description is good. Product description, all products. What about just for smooth shave? It's listing only for smooth shave. What about only for sweet spring? It's listing only for sweet spring. And what if I want everything listed? Here it lists everything that we have. All dates, if I want last year only, if I want this year only, there's nothing. Last year only, which is 2017, there's those two. If I want all dates to display, this is what it has. Show only items with stock left. Show sub batches. And so the sub batches gives you the different sizes, large or medium. Consolidate products. Add to sales registry directly. So I will put us back how we were and no batch selected. Let's select these two batches. Now we can talk about Bay Rum shaving example in home location. Sale, transfer, move products to another location. Select the desired product tag and enter the quantity to be transferred. If you want to be able to select products without choosing a specific batch, check the consolidate the products options here before option before transferring products okay so you can move products if you're um, not doing good in one area and doing well in another area especially with consignment type things you could move some products around and just keep note of it know where everything's at all right uh, sale remove Select the desired product tag, add products to a sales register if you want to be able to select products without choosing a specific. Okay, I read this a little while ago. Click the consolidate products options before recording sales. All right. All right. Um, let's see. It has edit. Initial bars 12, nominal size 5 ounces, product ID tag. I might want to add a small and initial bars and what I have left. The cure time on smooth shave is 30 days. There's a 2% waste factor, 15% expected shrinkage. Show notes. All right. So you get the idea of what's being talked about in the batch number one, batch one. All right, so you have invoices. And we looked at that a, a moment ago for the invoices. All right, so moving forward, I think that was everything there. Well, if we click on batch number two which is pink lilac example in home location we have all this information about that particular batch how many are left in stock 13 what's the product ID tag only large and the initial bars were 23 we made 23 we said we had 13 left. The size is 5 ounces. We have our cure time. If we need to m remove it, if we need to edit it for some reason. Cancel that. And so you get to see how each um, batch you can see the product status and the production history. 
in this area. All right. Move stock. Moving forward. Move stock. Moving products. Transfer to another location. If you have consignment customers or multiple warehouse locations, you can define new locations and transfer products there. Select a batch and click the transfer button. Reuse products in recipes. You can move products into your supplies inventory to use in recipes, like for in beds, gift baskets. Select a batch and click the reuse button. Remove stock. To remove products from your stock without selling them, click the Remove button. You will enter the purpose for this removal, like advertising, donation, personal use, write-off, or other. We don't, we don't have that much left for this section before we move into the big area. We just finished up product status and production history. I hope that you were able to... Um, get some information from it and get a familiarity with it to where you won't feel you know a little apprehensive about it sometimes that can happen so the very last topic is adjust product stock in the wizard audit your product stock periodically like annually you'll want to audit your stock check or show only batches with remaining stock check show only batches with remaining stock then print the batch list take it to the stock room and mark up the printout with the actual quantity remaining of each product it's most similar to my supplies right when you're auditing your supplies well here you're actually auditing doing an annual audit of your actual product that you have completed um, in my products, select the batch whose left quantity is incorrect and either click the remove button to write off excess or click the edit button to correct the stock left quantity and click the save button. Repeat this for each batch whose left quantity is incorrect. Note, if you reduce a batch's stock left quantity to, to zero and have checked show only batches with remaining stock, the batch will no longer be displayed in the list. Okay? So this is how you would do your annual product audit. The annual product audit. So we would click here. Let's see. Check only show batches. Select the reports you want to see. No, I'm sorry. Let me do what we just read. All right, so here it says check show only batches with remaining stock. So this is where you will find that information. Show only items with stock left. And it's already checked. Okay? Then print the batch. After you click this, click print. Print the display. We're not going to print it. We're only going to preview it. So we'll print, and this is what we'll print. And then this is where you will take this list, and you will literally walk to your um, area that your products are um, kept, and you will compare what you have left to what is actually on the shelf. If it's not 27, then here's where you can adjust it here on your sheet. Then you come back with this completed all marked up sheet of what's actually there, and you can edit or you can remove it from uh, stock here okay so once you're out of the uh, stock room and the marked up printout is um, marked with the actual quantity remaining select a batch whose left quantity is incorrect and either click the remove button here or edit let's just edit it and this allows us to edit these um, parameters. So instead of 12, let's say we have 11. Click Save, and our changes have been saved. All right. And where did we change the 11? To the large. And if we click Show Sub Batches, we'll say a large has 11. Okay. 
So I will deselect that. And that's an example of how you can um, edit your product, your product's um, production history. All right. I think that's pretty good. I'm so proud of us for getting this far, and I'm very happy. All right, so let's go back to our initial setup in the help menu. If you closed yours out accidentally, I'll show you where to get it again. It's in the help menu, the user's manual, and then click initial setup. A little more than halfway down the page, there's a blue hyperlink that says initial setup. Once you click on it, it will take you to the initial setup. If you don't find it there, go under the search tab, the search um, area and type in initial setup and hopefully you will get to where we are. So remember we were instructed to delete the example data from the database. That's what we were supposed to do but we made the decision to go through each one of these different areas to see what was um, what was actually there. We wanted to just delve into it a little further to get an idea of how some of the information was um, captured and utilized and how it was set up in my recipes, my supplies, my products. Now I'll tell you something that I did gather from this. It seems that once you go into each, each tab there's additional um, tabs of information that are built in for each area. For example, my supplies. You know that there's going to be vendors so there's going to be areas where you can capture your vendor information. Um, my products. You know that you're going to have customers purchasing products. It could be business customers. It could be personal. It could be uh, personal use. So you know there's going to be areas for you to set up uh, parameters to capture the contact information. So it appears that the more we get into the software, the more we will become familiar with each one of these different windows that gives us an opportunity to learn about more things for the software. So moving forward, and we've already set up um, the, pre well, no, let's not even go there. What I was going to say was we've set up the preferences, but that's all going to be cleared because this is what we're going to do now. We are going to delete the example data from the database. And here's the caveat. We are going to clear the data knowing that all the data of the selected types will be deleted. All the data of the selected types will be deleted. So do not use this command if you have entered any data you want to keep. So where do we go for that? Let's minimize this. Go File, Database, Clear Database. I'm clicking on Clear Database. It opens another window. This command is intended to be used once to remove example data that came with SoapMaker. Use it before you start entering your own ingredients, recipes, etc. into your own database. Check the data types you want to delete. Batches and sales records, recipes and blend formulas, recipe groups, purchase records and ingredient costs, additives ingredients, additive ingredients, packaging items, suppliers and customers. Clear everything because none of this information pertains to you or my business and so we don't want anything looking for um, information that isn't there. Once you delete something I, I'm certain it's all it appears that it's all networked to each separate area so I would strongly suggest to select everything, delete everything. And so clicking OK. Are you sure you want to permanently delete all batches, recipes and blends, recipe groups, purchase records, additive ingredients, packaging items and suppliers and customers from your database? Yes, because it's the first time we're using it and we need to clear it out to get our information input, to get our information into the software. SoapMaker will now restart with the cleared data. Okay. All right, so we have restarted it and now we don't have any data from those examples. Our tip of the day, if you use an oil which is not included in the list of 80 plus provided, 
with the program you can add your own custom oil. As a starting point, its properties can be copied from any of the standard oils. Okay. And now, preferences. Go in and set up your preferences. And you can do this on your own time or you can take a few minutes to do them right now. And ideally, let's see, with the general tab, it, it appears that everything is still selected. Nothing was deselected in the clear clearing of the data. Solid soap, it appears that five ounces remained. But I remember setting this thing up to seven ounces. I'm not sure if I clicked save or not, but I, I might not have clicked save. All right, adjust water amounts by discount. Water discount, lye discount. Um, all solid soap recipes, maximum number of oils, 14. Additives, 20. Packaging, 18. Waste allowance, 2%. Sample size, 5 ounces. Suggested fragrance amounts, a half ounce per pound. Moving on to the liquid soap. I don't do liquid soap, so I'm not even going to mess with this tab. And I don't make cream soap, so I'm not going to mess with that tab either. Non-soap, I'll take a look at this. Input units for ingredients, grams, that's fine. Recipe volume units. Let's see, do they have ounces? Or is it just fluid ounces? I guess fluid ounces is fine. For volume units. Portion size, I put 8 ounces. Portion size, we'll say 1. Calculated weight units, we'll say grams. Weigh scale provision, Let's see, expected water loss during process. Not sure what that's about. I'm sure we'll get to it further in. All non-soap recipes. Maximum number of ingredients, 20. Packaging items, 20. Waste allowances for resize to mold and make batch, 2%. Sample size for cost comparison, 5 ounces. All right, that's done. Blends, input units for ingredients. Let's use ounces. Or do they have grams? Yeah, let's do grams. Calculated weight units. Let's do grams. All blend formulas. Maximum number of ingredients. Ten. Uh, maximum number of ingredients. Let's do seven. And set this up as specific to your liking. You can always come back in and change this. All right, now for this um, tab, the production and taxes tab, sales tax used in supply shipment and sales record forms, select tax group. I have Baytown, Chambers, Humble, and Louisiana. So it appears that mine did retain the information and I'm sorry for the rustling in the background. Um, I purchased something recently and I wanted to capture the tax eight and a quarter and that's what is here and I'm just checking it on two other receipts that I do have yes it appears that the tax is 8.25 percent and that's for one area and I'll go we'll go through this a bit further when we're moving through the software to totally understand the production and taxes area because I don't want to set it up incorrectly I want to set it up correctly at first sales tax and value added tax soap maker provides a number of features to help you track taxes and in the professional edition prepare tax returns the initial setup Let's see, tax one, tax two. According to my area, I only have the one tax. It's eight and a quarter, but I need to get the um, the tax for the other two areas, the other two or three areas. Okay. 
All right, I'll get out of this area for now. Moving forward, supply stock value, current market value. Remind me at year end to capture inventory values. Post process defaults can also be adjusted in my products. Days needed to cure, I put 45. Expected shrinkage, 15% price for use in your price list okay all right I'm gonna click save changes if the one thing I know is whatever I need to revert to or come back to it and change it out I know that I can always just click quickly open the preferences tab here and I have access to it again that's the beauty of working your way through the new software okay so let me put a couple of things away that I pulled out and look at my checklist to make sure that we are moving along all right now we're going to set up our stock of supplies so 